Okay, so today I'm going to look at calculating the forces in a pin jointed truss using what's known as the method of joints, which is an analytical approach. So I made a previous video where I looked at uh, an graphical approach to solving the forces in trusses. So this is uh, in comparison to that, which is an analytical approach. Let's remind ourselves of what we're looking at here. So these are some examples of trusses pylons in the electricity supply, bridges, and even the International Space Station has some truss structures in it. We will model them by looking at the uh, members, which are either acting as a strut, which means that the force is under compression. They are pushing into the joints, as follows. And that is compared to a tie, where the forces are in tension and here you can see that they are pulling out of the joints. So a tie uh, means that their forces pull and a strut means that the forces push onto the joints. So we're going to look at a simple example and this is the similar example that I did with the graphical approach so we should get similar answers. We start with the top joint because that's where the known force is and essentially what we do is we create a, an equilibrium situation for each joint and resolve the forces in different directions. So you can see for this top joint here we have got this top joint here we've got it sketched over here on the in the middle of the screen and uh, we know that the top force is 300 newtons, so that's coming in there. And then we know uh, nothing else other than the angles. So I'm just going to sketch a line across there. Uh, and we know that the, this angle inside here, that's 60 degrees. Okay, so we can split that in half. We know that it's 30 degrees either side. Okay, so there's like a 30 degree angle in there. Uh, and so this means that this angle here must be 60 degrees and this angle here must be 60 degrees. Okay. Let's resolve these forces uh, vertically. So I'll just, uh, let's take down as being positive and you'll see why in a minute. Um, and just remember that because it's under equilibrium this means that if you sum up the forces in any particular direction, then they have to equal zero. Okay, this comes from Newton's laws, which says that the sum of the forces in a particular direction equals the mass times the acceleration. And because there's no acceleration here, uh, they have to equal zero. So let's sum up those forces in the y direction, taking uh, vertically down as being positive. You'll see that we've got a 300 newtons pointing down there, so we'll have that. Uh, and then what else have we got? Well, we've got these other members here, but we've not drawn any arrows on them yet. When you don't know which direction they're pointing in, then convention just to draw them pulling out as if they're in tension. And then if they come out as positive, then that means tension is correct. But if they come out as negative, it means that the arrow should be pointing in the other direction. Okay, so let's go ahead then, and we've got 300 pointing down. We've also got this force here, we're going to call that one BD, uh, and we're going to call this one here AD. So BD, the moment, is pulling down, uh, and it's 60 degrees to the horizontal, so it must be this 30 degrees inside here, this is 30 degrees there. Okay, so we can say we've got 300 plus BD, cos 30 degrees, because remember when you resolve a force, when you go through the angle, you multiply it by cos of that angle. And on the other side, we've got the same thing, we've got an AD, and AD is going through this angle here, and we resolve it in the vertical direction, so it's going to be plus AD, and that's going to be cos 30 degrees as well. And all of that is going to equal zero, okay? So all of this business here is the summing up of the forces in the y direction. Okay. 
and then we set it equal to zero. So this is all about resolving forces, so if you're not following the resolving forces aspect then perhaps need to go back and review a video on that particular topic. Now let us look at uh, resolving forces in the horizontal direction. Let's take left to right as being positive, doesn't really matter which. You'll see here we've got this force here BD and we'd have to resolve that through the 60 degrees to line it up on the horizontal here. So BD cos 60 degrees will be pointing in the right, will be going left to right. AD is going in the other direction when we resolve that into the horizontal direction. So that's going to be minus AD and then it's going through 60 degrees to line up with the axis, so cos 60 and all of that is going to equal zero as well. So we've got there two equations which we've created by considering equilibrium and Newton's laws, summing the forces up in a particular direction and setting them equal to zero because it's under static equilibrium. If we look at the, these two equations, you'll see that there are two unknowns, AD and BD, and we have two equations. So as long as the number of unknowns equals the number of equations, then in principle we should be able to solve them. There's two simultaneous equations here. If we look at the second equation, let's rearrange that to make it a little bit easier. So we've got BD cos 60 degrees on the left. So let's take the minus AD cos 60 to the other side so it becomes positive. Hopefully you should be able to see there that the cos 60 is on both sides so we could cancel that out. And so BD equals AD. Okay, that's useful because we can now substitute that back into the first equation. So let's write the first equation out again. Cos 30 degrees plus AD cos 30 degrees. So I'm just writing it out again and then we're going to substitute in uh, this BD equals AD. So it doesn't matter which one we choose, let's just replace this BD with an AD. So let's replace that with AD, there we go, plus the other AD cos 30 degrees equals zero. So hopefully you can see we've got one lot of AD cos 30 and we've got another lot of AD cos 30. So that means we've got two lots of AD cos 30 degrees and we've also got 300 here as well. So I will be looking, remember we're solving for it. AD, so let's keep the 2AD cos 30 degrees on the left and let's take the 300 to the other side so it will become minus 300 and therefore AD is going to be minus 300 divided by 2 cos 30 degrees. And if you put that into your calculator then let's, let's go over here now then you will find that AD equals minus 173 newtons, minus 173 newtons. Now remember that we took down as being positive, so, uh, and when we look at the uh, diagram here, we also said that if we didn't know the direction of the forces, then we said, look, if they're pulling out of the joint, then um, that's positive as well but it's come out as negative, so that tells it must actually be pointing in the other direction. Okay, so it's actually pointing in the other direction. So in fact, we'll put it on here as that. So if it's pointing into the joint, it's a strut, and if it's pointing into the strut, uh, joint on this end, then it'll be pointing into the, strut, into the joint at the other end. Okay, so this implies it is a strut and it's actually pointing, we can get rid of that, up like that. Okay, now then, uh, let's go to the next joint, the bottom right hand joint. So we previously just worked out BD, oh actually we didn't do really BD, we worked out AD but obviously at BD is the same, 173. So this force here, BD, 
and we said it was pointing up here like this, pointing into that joint. So it's going to be pointing into this joint here. So it's pointing into this joint here. And we know that BD is equal to 173 newtons. Okay, so let's just um, let's put some angles on here. This is just a sketch, remember. So remember this one here is 60 degrees. So we're going to know that this one here must be 30, right? That's 30 degrees. And let's do the same thing again. Let's resolve uh, in the vertical sense. Let's take down as being positive again, just to be consistent from last time. Uh, let's start with the one that we do know, R2. That's clearly pointing up, so we'll have that as minus R2. And then we're going to have this BD. This is BD here. This member here. That's pointing down, so we're going to have that as plus and it's going to have to be resolved through the 30 degrees to line it up with the uh, vertical axis. So we're going to need BD cos 30 degrees equals 0. And obviously we know what BD is, it's 173, so let's write that in, minus R2 plus 173 cos of 30 degrees equals 0. Uh, we can take the minus R2 to the other side. So 173 cos 30 degrees equals R2. Well, if you'd work that out, that comes out as 150 newtons. Okay, now if we look at the diagram, uh, we see on the left we've got 300 newtons. This is a symmetrical structure, uh, and so you would expect that the forces, the reaction forces R1 and R2 to share that load equally and so you'd expect them to be half of the 300, i.e. 150. So that's certainly looking right. Now let's, uh, let's resolve in the horizontal sense. Now the R2 force is completely vertically upward so that's not going to contribute uh, but we do have this BD and that will resolve through the 60 degrees. So we have uh, BD is going to be cos of 60. Uh, and if we're going to do left to right as being positive, then it's going in the negative direction. Okay. And then we've also got the CD force the one that we are finding, this one here, and we don't know what that is, so we're, like we said earlier on, if you don't know, draw it as intention pulling out, uh, and that's also going to be minus, uh, minus CD, and that's just minus CD, it's already lined up on the axis, equals zero. Actually, uh, the first one was wrong. Uh, it's not minus. It's actually positive, isn't it? Because when you look at this this force here, when you resolve that through the 60 degrees, it's going to be pointing left to right. So we'll correct that and make that plus. Okay, now that looks right. Okay, so clearly we know what BD is. It's 173. So 173 cos 60 degrees and the minus CD goes to the other side it will become positive CD and if we work that out 173 times cos 60 comes out as about 86.6 newtons um, and it was positive so that means that the direction we chose uh, in our guess was correct and so it is pulling out. So let's draw that in to complete this diagram. So that is under a tie, so it's going to be on a tie here. Okay, and, and that's all we need because we, we've solved, because it's a symmetrical structure, we know that the left hand side is the same as the other, so this is going to be strut as well. We know that AD equals BD. Okay, so that's a brief overview of the method of joints.